Hello, beautiful humans, and welcome back to Reignite Your Soul and day number seven of your self-love challenge. My name is Laura Plahuda, and I am always your host on here. Woohoo! <laughs> so today I went to an amazing breathworks class, and it is so amazing what the mind can do all on its own with extra oxygenation when you actually know how to breathe properly. And it's so cool. The like peace of mind that you get is just so incredible. And this is a place, guys, that I aspired to be at for so long. I remember when I first started getting started on my personal development journey and my mindfulness and just working with my thoughts, it was a chaotic mess in there. And even if I wanted to shut it off, I legit couldn't. How many of you guys are on that wavelength right now with me? Yes. <laughs> and no worries if you are there because, hey, if I can get from that squirrel brain place, and sometimes my brain still is a squirrel, but it's amazing what you can do when you actually put the work in. And to go along with that whole noisy mind, it makes total sense why our brains are so chaotic these days. Think about how much time throughout your day you actually have a time to actually breathe and do like nothing and think about nothing. It's, it's, it doesn't happen often, right? Like you got shit to do. You got to go to work. You got to pick the kids up. You got to uh, drive home. You got to commute. There's so much stuff going on. You've got notifications coming out of your yin yang on your, uh, your phone, your emails, your text messages. You've got this stuff to do. You've got that person to respond back to. It makes total sense why you're just so scattered, disorganized, like a chicken with your head cut off half the time. But like I always say, recognition is the key to that. And one thing that I did love when I first started getting into this was going to yoga classes. And I started going to more fast paced yoga because I couldn't handle the thought of just being with my mind quiet <laughs> like I needed to be doing something and maybe you're there now too or you just need to be doing something all the time because that's what you're conditioned to be doing and that helped me so I went to like the hot vinyasa flow classes so that you're constantly moving position to position so you're still doing it but you're still getting the amazing benefits of the yoga and the words that the teacher says it's absolutely incredible. And then from there, I started shifting more to the slower ones. And as time went on, I found that I actually loved like the more restorative and um, the meditative yogas because it was a chance for me to actually take time away from my busy life instead of going to the gym where it's just another thing that's going to stimulate your nervous system. It was a chance for me to go and actually take that hour to wind down my nervous system. And when it comes to your sympathetic nervous system, that's like your fight or flight. And then you've also got your parasympathetic nervous system, which is the opposite of it. So that's like your rest and digest. And the majority of people these days, especially in North America, because we're so go, go, go all the time, that's just the society we live in, our sympathetic nervous systems are so overstimulated. Our adrenals are so overstimulated. Our cortisol is through the roof. Our epinephrine is being fired at like friggin' all times. And we wonder why we can't sleep because we never have that chance for our bodies to actually chill out and go into that rest and digest, which also makes sense why we have so many digestive issues. So it's crazy how you can change some things and it helps with that quieting your mind and helping with your whole, um, that your overall health, like your actual physical health is benefited from it. It's absolutely incredible. And, and recognizing it and decluttering is probably the best thing that you can do. Like take a look at your schedule and see what is an actual thing that you need to be doing or that you're just doing for some reason that you don't even enjoy it. So something that you could do is go through your day and take a look at all of the different things that you're doing throughout the day and say, is this bringing me enjoyment or is this not bringing me enjoyment? Is this exciting me or not? And you might be amazed at some of the things that you are doing on a daily basis that aren't quite exciting you right now. 
And if you could start filtering some of those things out of your life and then taking that time to filter in some more quiet time, some more downtime for you, you'll be amazed at the shift that you, the shifts that you start having. So that's something that I would suggest. Just like when in the springtime you do your spring cleaning, you clean out your closet, you get rid of all the clothes you haven't worn in like so long and then you donate it all or you sell it, right? Like that's what you need to do with your brain and all of the tasks that you're doing on a day-to-day basis. So I would definitely suggest doing that because the more space you can create in your mind, the better it's going to be. So not only do you want to mix up the different thoughts that you're having, but you also want to start creating space. Start creating some space in your mind so you can fill it with some more things that are going to move you forward with your mindfulness practices. And that could be cleaning up your morning routine so that you can fit in your three things you love about yourself, three things you're grateful for, one thing you're looking forward to. Fitting in your affirmations, right? So instead of getting up in the morning and scrolling on Instagram for half an hour, you take that time. You, what I started doing was I just leave my phone in airplane mode. I leave it on airplane mode until about um, 11 o'clock and then I take it off airplane mode. That way I am not going to be wasting my time doing anything on Instagram, Facebook, social media, um, answering text messages, anything like that until I do the things that I want to do for myself. Because unless I'm, not, if I'm not able to fill up my own cup, I'm not going to be able to help anybody else. And we live in a society as well that happens to think that doing things for ourselves is selfish. And I absolutely hate that word. Hate it. Because it's so good to be selfish. You want to make sure that you're doing stuff for yourself. Because if you can't do stuff for yourself, you're never going to be able to do things for everybody else. And it's only when you're able to fill up your own cup that you're able to actually truthfully help everybody else in your life, your family, your friends, the loved ones, your coworkers, if you're a care worker at work, if you care for other people, you need to make sure that you're doing those things for you. Because if you keep putting yourself second and everybody else first, it's going to go nowhere quick for you. And you're going to come to a point where you've got to change, make some changes. And just know that you're so worthy of making those changes for yourself and that you're totally capable of it. You just have to put the work in and put the time. And trust me, when you actually take 10 to 15 minutes a day to actually think about what you're doing throughout your day, you're going to maximize your time. So take, taking that extra 10, 15 minutes up front is actually going to save you so much time throughout your day because if you don't do that, then you're losing so much time in the pockets of your day doing random shit that doesn't really matter, right? So it seems a little backwards. Take the time. Every single Sunday night, that's what I do. I plan out my week. So if you're not taking some time on Sunday night or whatever day of the week you want to do, do your meal prep. Do your stuff for yourself. Map out, like, what the heck? Like, if I want to be successful in my life, what do I have to do this week so that I am, like, successful, and map out your top priorities and make sure you're getting those in your schedule. All those other little fluffy things that don't really matter, ditch it. You can always do it next week or next weekend, right? Do the things that are most important to you and your goals and where you want to go in life. So if this podcast is something that you want um, to be doing, then schedule it into your day. Do it on your commute to work or do it on your lunchtime. Just schedule it in and then that way you're never, ever going to miss it. And you're going to feel so good from doing it and putting yourself first. And it's just going to go up and up and up from there. So I had something that I really wanted to share with you guys. And so Angie has been super bold. She has been doing the do and she reached out to me and um, has given me permission to share what she's been going through, some situations that we can kind of work through this together because I know that I can definitely relate to this. So I'm sure that a lot of you guys can relate to this as well. So Angie wrote to me and she said after yesterday's episode, she found out that she's actually afraid to succeed. And when I do things, I go full throttle. But unfortunately, what usually happens is something scares me and then I pull back and find a reason not to continue. 
And then she actually goes on to explain how she grew up with parents that always encouraged perfection. And she was told that she was capable of absolutely anything. But if she failed, then that's when she would hear the, all the negative things. So what she's found is that if she doesn't think that she's going to succeed, then she won't even try. And these are all such powerful realizations. Like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited for you. You're going to have so much growth after realizing all of this. But let's break this down. So when you when you say that you are you normally go full throttle, but then something scares you and then you pull back and you find a reason not to continue, like this is going to happen over and over and over again unless you make this change. And you realizing that next time that you catch yourself that you're starting to pull back away from something that you're really wanting, that's where you need to take that pause and that's where you need to start questioning yourself. So it's not until in that moment where that's where the presence comes in, being conscious, being present, being aware so you can catch this moment when it happens so that you can start correcting that behavior. So start questioning yourself in that moment and just ask yourself, like if you continue to to give like, 100% into what you're currently doing, what would the outcome be? And why is it that I really want to achieve this? How is my life going to change if I push through this this time and just kept on going? Because we make changes when the pain of staying the same is greater than that fear of change. So we realize that if we stay the same, then we're going to be in so much more pain than if we even just push through that fear and just explored it to see what was on the other side. That's when we decide that we want to make change. So it's not until in that specific moment that you're actually going to be able to do that. But you're being so aware, you are totally going to catch yourself in that. And when that happens, you let me know. But um, yeah, you're definitely going to want to question yourself at that point. But that's where the presence comes in. So that's awesome. So the next one, I grew up with parents that always encouraged perfection. I was told that if I I was capable of anything, but if I failed, then I would hear the negative. And as humans, like we want that validation. We want to feel like we're doing a good job. It's that inner child that just wants that satisfaction, right? And a little story to go along with that is when I was younger, um, me and my mom have an amazing relationship now, but Throughout school, I was the exact same as you, that I was just a go-getter and I was always getting good grades and I would get like, say like a 98% on a test. And my mom would be like, oh, like you got a 98, like why did, well, like if you got a 98, you totally could have got a hundred. And for me, it was as if nothing was good enough. And I always just felt like nothing was good enough. It didn't matter what I did it just wasn't good enough. And I started having the same thoughts as you. And it was, it's funny talking to my mom afterwards and like explaining that to her. And her whole thing was that she just wanted to push me to do better because she knew I was capable. She that was her way of empowering me. And it's crazy how perception has a big thing to do with it. So you could always have a conversation with your parents to understand that other side, because remember that we're all just products of our environment. So even your parents, they're just products of their environment. So their parents pass this down to them and then their path, they passed it down to you. And now you in this moment, because you're choosing to, you're in this time right now where there's so much change happening that you have so many opportunities that your parents didn't have and their parents didn't have. So you have the power, you hold the power right now to break that cycle And to understand that your parents are just products of their environment. They're just running based off of the program that they were programmed with. And that now you have that chance to break that cycle and really change that. Like how freaking cool is that? And to go along with the whole perfectionism thing in there as well. It's kind of tied into this as well. Like if I don't think I will succeed, I won't even try. Right. And the whole thing with that is it's a limiting belief. That's just always a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because if you always think that you're not going to succeed, you don't even try, you're guaranteeing your success, your success that you're actually failing every single time. Right. Because whether you think you are, or you think you aren't, you're right every single time. So if you think you're going to succeed, you're going to succeed. If you think you're going to fail, 
you're going to fail. So we've really got to work on shifting that, that failure mentality because it's so common and we just got to ditch the word altogether. Like failure, there's no such thing. There's lessons in life, but there's no such thing as failure because for example, if you want to run a five kilometer race, like you train super hard, you want to run this five kilometer race, you end up only running four kilometers. You're like, Oh shit. Like I can't do any more. Like you're exhausted. You ran four kilometers. You just freaking ran four kilometers. That's four kilometers more than you did before. Like how incredible is that? And then you take those lessons that you learned like, okay, like shit. Like I didn't reach that goal that I wanted, but you know what? I did just run four kilometers and what can I do next time so that I can push myself even more? That's the mentality that we need to start adopting. There's no such thing as failure. It's all just lessons. It's all just moving forward. And I'm going to go right back to the whole puppy thing. Like we need to start celebrating ourselves for even the tiniest little things. Because if we can't be grateful and excited for the tiniest little things that we do in our days, we're never, ever, ever going to be excited and grateful for the big things that happen in our lives. So start looking at all the little things that you're doing throughout your day that just seem like normal things. You've already created that routine. It's a normal thing for you to do that. Like you have breakfast in the morning. Like you just had breakfast. That's freaking awesome. Like you're fueling your body. Okay. What else do you do on a daily basis? Like you get yourself out of bed. Like that's awesome. You get yourself to work. That's freaking awesome. Like look at all the things that you're doing right. So start celebrating yourself for all those little things. And then the next thing that Angie said was when I was younger, I had such a carefree attitude. I was silly. I used to look at myself in the mirror and make faces and laugh my head off. Something has happened from then until now. I truly loved who I was and I didn't have a care in the world. And honestly, I am so proud of you for being open and vulnerable with sharing this because this is something that so many people struggle with. You have this identity of yourself of what you used to be like, and you think that somehow there's no way that you can get back there. But we know now that there is, it's totally possible. And that girl, that carefree, fun person, she's still in there. She's just waiting to come back out and play. And I would encourage you, like, what are some of the things that that young carefree Angie would have done back then? What are some of those things that she loved doing? What were some of those things that excited her? And go back and try and do them again. Because, you know, you're never too old to go back and try those things. Um, When we like as a society, we feel like adulting, like we can't do the things like when we were children. But, you know, children have it figured out and we need to start learning from the children and we need to continue doing what the children do. Just because we need to have a job and we have responsibilities doesn't mean we can't have fun and we can't enjoy life. Like what the heck's the point of being here if we can't enjoy life, right? So go back to those things. And I'll also share some amazing affirmations that you can add into your new beliefs because um, you can do some clearings with that and then really start reinforcing those new beliefs with those Um, like being fun, being silly, being carefree. Like you can include all of those into your ideal vision for yourself. And so another, so that was all kind of under like the fear of success and the fear of failure. All of those amazing things that Angie just shared. And she also shared some amazing things kind of along the lines of the fear of judgment. So she had a situation where she went out for dinner with um, a girlfriend And she found that she was um, downplaying things in her life because she didn't want people to think that she was like boasting about it or being cocky about it or or sharing too much or she didn't want to stand out. There's a bit of a fear of standing out because there is like you get judged if you eat unhealthy by some people and if you eat healthy, you also get judged by other people, right? And judgment is a big thing and anything with judgment I want to question you on, are you judging yourself about these things? Because a lot of the time we think that other people are judging us based on our judgments on ourselves and the judgments that we have on others. And maybe it was from back before you started doing kind of having these changes where you would maybe you were in a bad place and you would maybe judge people for eating healthy if you were out. So if you have that judgment still in your head ingrained, as you start to change your identity, you're going to start thinking that other people still have that, but really it's just because you're judging yourself. So we, you really need to clear on that, that belief that 
you're being judged by eating healthy because that's not a belief that's serving you anymore. So a few of the um, quotes that she actually said specifically was, I can't be too perfect. What will people think of me? I downplay myself around certain friends. I'm judged. I don't want to be judged as one of those people that order healthy options. And I, and then, um, she was always told by her parents, like, don't be too cocky. So basically to strive for greatness, but don't think you're too great. So that is going to downplay everything that you're doing, but know that you can be your bright, amazing self. And it doesn't take away from anybody else's light. It just, it will just, if anything, it'll amplify it. It'll bring up their energy. And just like all these situations, like really, like I say it, the awareness is key, but it really is. Like once you start realizing this, the next time you go out for dinner, you might make a healthier choice and you're going to just be more confident about it because you can go into that situation knowing what happened last time and you can literally mentally visualize yourself going in there, being confident, like ordering whatever you want to actually order on the menu with confidence and actually do it. And I encourage you, because remember, your brain is no difference between fact and fiction. So if you prime your brain into, into believing these things beforehand, it's going to confidently do them in the actual real life situation because it's practiced it so many times. So you can actually use visualization as a, an amazing tool for things like that, for any social situations that you're worried about, um, any fear of judgment that way. You can visualize yourself in that actual situation beforehand and maybe like say like a week before leading up to it. Like it seems like practice for something so dumb, like going out for lunch with a girlfriend, right? But it doesn't matter if it seems dumb because it works. So every single day before you go, like visualize it and go through your head how you want it to work. And then when you go into the actual situation, you'll be so surprised at how it actually turns out. And another thing too, if you feel, if you're ever unsure as to how people around you feel and you feel like there's like this judgment, it's always good to have open communication with your close friends and family and just say like, um, like even if you're out for like out for dinner with them and you're having that thought about feeling judged about ordering something healthy on the menu, just say like, Hey, like. I don't know why this thought just came into my head, but I really want to order this. But for some reason, like I kept having this, this thought in my head. And I know obviously like you wouldn't be judging me for that. And I know that it's something that's all in my head, but I just kind of wanted to share that because I thought that it was kind of crazy that I'm having these thoughts. Like obviously I can eat what I want on the menu and you might be surprised at the response of some people because a lot of people will have other insecurities like that and being open and vulnerable and sharing your insecurities, it, it shows so much strength within you. And we're also conditioned as a society to not show our weaknesses. And I think that our weaknesses and showing that vulnerability is something that is, is very looked up, looked up on because somebody who shows their vulnerability sh- shows that you don't have to be perfect it gives other people permission to also show their vulnerability. And that's how as a society, we're going to be able to shift things into a a whole different way of people living, having more open communication, sharing our feelings, sharing our emotions, understanding that not everything has to be perfect, that we're all just doing the very best that we can with the situations that we're given. That's how we're going to create this change. So I'm so proud of you once again for being open, being vulnerable, sharing all of this so that we can all grow from your experiences and also for you taking the time to put in your, the work for yourself because the time you invest into yourself is going to 100% be something that you are going to reap the benefits from for the rest of your life. So when it came to all of the things that Angie was sharing about, there was some key beliefs in there that we pointed out that are limiting beliefs. So when you break down like a situation like that, you can really pull out limiting beliefs based on different wording. And if you're ever unsure, like feel free to send me a message or post into the group and I can help you to pull out those limiting beliefs because it's something that takes practice. So for some of the new affirmations that would be absolutely incredible for you to add in would be I would say it is safe to stand out. 
let your brain know that it's totally safe to stand out. And you could also do one, I'm excited to continue going all in with life because everything I do, I'm excited to learn from. So that really helps with the, the, um, the perfectionism and the failure. Another one you could do is I am confident just being me, right? You could just be yourself and that's okay. Maybe you want to have one that says I am silly, fun, and carefree because you are and it's in you. Maybe you want one that says I'm so excited because I feel so free and I don't have a care in the world. Maybe that's one that you really want to live into. We want one that says, everything is always working out for me. I love being me. Those are some super powerful ones you can add into your, um, your routine. And remember that this is all repetition. So saying it in the morning, saying it in the evening, saying it with enthusiasm, with that emotion, and really believing it. Like feel it. Like feel it, feel it, feel it, feel it, feel it. And then the last thing too that I want to touch on for today is um, another thing that Angie pointed out was that she wants people to think that she's normal. And this is like something that is so ingrained into us with society. We are raised just to fit in, to blend in, right? If when we're in elementary school or in school, if we're different, you get bullied, So you're right from a young age, you're taught because like you want to just fit in. You don't want to be bullied by standing out. So you just start conforming. You start doing what the popular kids are doing or you start doing um, what other kids are doing instead of doing what feels right to you. So you're, you're losing that intuition. You're losing that, that spirit inside of you that's guiding you. You're naturally like learning to not listen to it and ignore it because it, it instills that fear into you. When you listen to it and you stand out, it brings on pain. So you're going to naturally avoid it. And the education system, like it's there to create employees, people who are there to follow the leader. People are there to do as they're told. So it makes sense why your brain wants you to just be normal. And that being said, when it comes to your environment, This is why you really want to make sure like you are the sum of the five people that you hang around with most. It's a, it's a proven thing that the five people you hang around with most, you're going to be like those five people. So who are the people that you're spending time with? Are you spending time with people who all have this? I want to be normal. I want to fit in. Um, I'm worried about judgment. Are you hanging around with people that are like that, that have those same beliefs as you currently have? Or are you going to start hanging around with or having more podcasts, having more positive influence, reading more books with people that have beliefs that are uh, pushing you in the direction that you want to go? And that's something that you really need to take seriously because the more that you instill these new beliefs that you want to achieve into your head, the more that's going to become your normal. And that's what it's all about. It's about your normal. It's not about society's normal. It's about your normal. So that is going to be it for today, guys. So if you have any questions, as always, ask away. Know that it is so safe to be vulnerable. It's so safe to open up your heart. And it's so safe to open up your mind to new, amazing, incredible things for yourself. And just know that you're totally capable of it, that I believe in you. And I'm so proud of you for all of the work that you've already put into yourself and all the work that you're about to keep on doing. So I'm so proud of you. You're absolutely amazing. I love you and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.